I don't make promises unless I can deliver on them. And if you can do the three things we go over in this video, I promise you that you are going to get 700 plus on your next SAT. You see, what most people don't realize is that SAT math is not rocket science. You don't have to be a genius to hit the top one percentile. Instead, there is just a quick, simple formula to get there. And if it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, six hundred range to 700 plus by their next SAT through online program, SAT Math Accelerator. Link in the pinned comments. Anyways, as I mentioned, there is a quick, simple formula to hit top one percentile. And there are three moving parts. And the first is going to be concept mastery. What do I mean by that? Well, as we all know, there are 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. And these are the 25 concepts you will see on your next SAT. I'm going to link this in the pinned comment, but what you have to understand is that for every single one of these concepts, for example, for quadratics, there are five separate things that you need to know about quadratics for the SAT. And that's going to be the case for every single one of these concepts, but let's use quadratics for demonstration purposes. How can we reach mastery on quadratics? Well, here's the thing. This is going to be the concept summary that my students use inside the accelerator program, but here's everything you need to know about quadratics. There are going to be five different things. So for example, first is going to be x intercepts second is going to be finding the sum and product of the roots third is going to be based on finding the location of the vertex there are two methods and the fourth is going to be a vertex slash standard form for a parabola and the last but not least is going to be discriminants and for every single one of these sub topics for quadratics you kind of have to have everything mapped out on how it works and when to exactly use it so for example when it comes to quadratics it's going to be testing you on how to find the x intercepts and to do so you're going to need to know how to use the factor and then how to use the quadratic formula. And what's the difference and when do we use each of them? Well, factoring, you use it when the equation is simple and factorable, and then you use the quadratic formula if the equation is not factorable. And a quick question pattern you need to be aware of is that if you're working with a parabola and the question has plus or minus inside, for example, you see over here, 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 and here, then the question is 100% testing you on the quadratic formula because that's the only time you will ever see plus or minus on the SAT. So we not only have to know quadratics, but we also have to know about the x-intercepts and we have to know the difference between the two and the question pattern for these types of questions. And if you have made it this far, here's a quick bonus. Let's have a quick summary on exactly what you need to know for parabolas for the SAT. So x-intercept was one of them. The next one is going to be the sum and product of the roots. When it comes to roots, you need to understand how to find the sum and the product of the roots. And a quick question pattern is that if the question is specifically asking you to find the sum or product of the roots, then go straight into the formulas. If you look at this example question right here, the question is giving us a parabola and it's asking what is the product of the roots, right? Then go straight into the formula C over A. And to save time, let's quickly go over the rest. The third thing you need to know for parabola is going to be vertex. You need to understand how to find it using the vertex formula, which is going to be negative B over A versus the midpoint formula. And next, you have to realize that SAT is going to test you on two separate forms on expressing a parabola. First one is going to be the standard form and second one is going to be the vertex form. And lastly, it's going to be discriminants. Discriminants is going to be tested two separate ways. First one is finding the number of roots. Second is going to be finding the number of intersections between line and a parabola. So the key here is that if you can have everything mapped out in your head, you know exactly how the SAT is going to test you on these types of topics, then you have essentially reached mastery. Because when it comes to quadratics question on the SAT, whenever it comes to parabola, it's going to fall under one of these five different types. So if you see a question testing you on quadratics and it's testing you on the x-intercepts, it's either going to be based on factoring or quadratic form. Formula. It's that simple. Having the mastery of the concept is what allows you to solve every single question correctly. But SAT, there is a time limit. You not only have to solve these questions correctly, but also quickly. Which brings us to the second part, also known as the speed training. Whenever you see a parabola question that is testing you on x-intercept, you can't think about, oh, wait, what do I do here? How do I solve this question? It cannot take you that long. You should know exactly what to do in a matter of seconds. If the question is testing you on quadratics and it's asking you to find the sum of the root, it's negative B over A product C over A. It should come just like that. And for my students, we use what's known as the speed training to get them to the point where they can recall literally everything that's in here in a matter of seconds, just like that. We use the concept summary to map out all the concepts and the question patterns. And then we use the speed training to get super fast at it. Doing these two things alone will take you to the high 600s. But wait, what if that's not enough? What if you're trying to go for the top 1% score? 
Well, the third and the last missing piece of this equation is going to be known as the hard questions. You see, easy and medium questions make up 90% of the SAT, but there's that 10% that's super, super hard. We call them the level five questions. The concepts, question patterns, and the speed training will allow you to breeze through the easy and medium difficulty questions. But when it comes to the hard level five questions, you have to go through a lot of them and learn the ins and outs of these level five questions. And one way to do so is by going through the last few questions of the math portion of the SAT practices. And me personally, I don't think that's the most efficient way to do things. I mean, you can still do it, but you want to save these exams because you have limited number of these practices and instead use them as you get closer to your next SAT. So for my students, we use what's known as the SAT math solidifier, which is literally the collection of the hardest questions you will ever see on the SAT so that you know the ins and outs of these level five questions, which will soon become very easy. And what that means is now you are capable of solving every question correctly, quickly, including the level five question and doing so will take you to bare minimum 700 plus and even a 750 plus on your next SAT. And if you're just getting started with SAT prep or you've been studying for a while and your score is stuck or you just have no idea what you're doing, then check out this four-step guide to 800 on SAT math.